Seattle House Mafia. All right. Well, we are back for another episode, an industry artist interview um, with the Seattle House Mafia crew here in the Seattle House Mafia headquarters. And I feel like I struggled. I struggled actually with this one, John, because like I've known you forever. And the truth is you have been headlining and producing music for longer than I've been DJing, which is 25 years. So how the fuck do I do, I do any kind of intro justice? Um, but anyway, in the studio, John Lee, Seattle, uh, Seattle DJ producer, one of my favorites all around. I'm a little biased because he's local, but even if you weren't local, uh, how you doing, John? I'm doing great. Thank you for the <laughs> kind words. And let's just keep it ego free, man. I don't need some dramatic. Uh, Ta da! He's in the <laughs> Ladies studio. and gentlemen. Guy, you know, I just, I'm a, just a, a West Seattle boy. You are. Just no, hanging out. It's, yeah, you say that, but, but check this out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you one more. So every time I open up my fucking social feeds, whether it's Instagram or Facebook, and in fact, what inspired me to wear my tilted shirt was because there was a video of you playing shirtless in the jungle <laughs> of Costa Rica with like these beautiful Costa Rican people. And it was like, was it sunset? Yeah, sunset, sin camisa, which means no shirt in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I, so what was the name of the festival? Uh, Ocaso Festival. And you've done that a couple times, right? Yes, I've done that uh, since the inaugural year, I believe 2017. So every year other than 2021, just because things COVID weren't thing. weren't cracking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, every year that it's been operational, I've been there. I know, and every time I see I see that you're going there, I always text you and say, dude, I want to come as part of your entourage. So mm -hmm. my goal is, once I'm a brown belt, so I can actually offer some real protection, mm -hmm. I'll come as part of your entourage. Okay. Not, not, not that it's a rough crowd by any means. I well, mean, it looks could, like a super fun crowd. You could come for media reasons. I could. You know, I, I mean, Seattle House Mafia represent. You know, you Maybe. could do some interviews, could gather some content for for your channel and for your your stees and you know it'd be super fun yeah i mean it just looks amazing right yeah. like is that is that kind of one of your favorite i mean i know you it's like choosing your favorite kid right but like is that one of your favorite sort of festivals to play it just looks so lively oh, my favorite festival for sure i mean yeah. one of my favorite things to play every year hands down my my uh my friends who are uh, consequently also the promoters do such a great job with everything and uh the ex I mean, I haven't played a bad gig there yet. I haven't, as far as the events, I haven't seen a bad event. Um, and yeah, super grateful for that. Uh, you know, my, yeah, super grateful. Ocaso is the best. It looks super fun. And had, I, got, I got to make it down there. Yeah. Had it not been for Ocaso, um, you know, it, there's a likelihood I might not be playing in Central America or south america or playing around costa rica all the time so right because you, know. you chile uh guatemala you played mm -hmm. of course costa rica right yeah ecuador panama um yeah i mean that's it so far but that's a lot yeah that's fantastic a lot to man. be happy about <laughs> yeah, no, uh, yeah. no doubt man so um you know i always like to kind of go back and get the origin story like i said you've been doing this for a long time mm -hmm. and um, like, was there an event, a person, a party, like something that initially got you into just dance music in general? Uh, well, dance music in general, um, I just ended up going to a rave cause a girl that I liked, actually I was, a girl. I, I, well, I was dating, I was dating I her, it. I was dating her and she kind of broke up with me. I went to a rave and I knew she went with some other dude. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, like I had to go see what was going on and I went and I was, I was sold. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, and then I started going to parties for the fun of it. Um, but then I guess around end of 93 or maybe it was the beginning of 94, I went to a party at the old King Cat Theater, which Love I'm sure place. you remember. Oh, yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people that weren't around then or you know weren't a part of seattle's um scene blossoming uh w wouldn't know the venue but it was just an old beautiful theater 
uh, one stage, lots and lots of seating as you'd expect at a theater with, with, with a port portion of the floor in front of the stage had the seats removed. And my friend Josh Quest, or Quest as they called him then, was... Shout out to Quest. Yeah, Quest um, was DJing. And we had been friends for years. Um, always thought he was a great guy, cool. But i never seen him or anybody else so cool as as when he was DJing. And I was just so mesmerized by his music selection and his ability to do what he was doing that I think that night I decided that I wanted to DJ. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I used to, like, I would look for you guys' names on flyers. Like, that was sometimes the determining factor for me to go out. Was Quest on the flyer? Was Donald on the flyer? Was John Lee on the flyer? Like, it, it really, you know? And, and uh, I probably started a year or two after you, but I did the the King Cat, the, I mean, not playing, but just going as a, yeah, as a patron, yeah. right? Because like, I didn't start playing until, like, 96, 97. Um, I love that venue, though. It was super fun. It was really amazing place. And they would do like down tempo and atmospheric in, in the, the in the lobby, <sighs> which is where you would normally walk in and get your popcorn so and your sodas and stuff. And the kids are all fizzed out on bean bags. And, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And the, and the, it's like it was like a U shaped, and yep. you could go into the theater from from hallways with you know like ramps and yeah. stairs on on both sides yeah, it was just your quintessential so cool. older theater you know yeah just it was... repurposing it for such a dope uh, yeah. a dope scene and now amazon owns it in fact the twitch i think the twitch group is in that building believe it or not are we giving those plugs on here <laughs> <laughs> let's 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 keep oh, it local lo lo might have to edit that out. Keep, keep it real local <laughs> <laughs> and street, it's just and sad street. right yeah, yeah yeah but i mean whatever yeah we, we all use those services so that so you got into that was the moment where you decided to DJ, but you've been producing for almost as long, no? Yeah, I mean, I think I probably wrote like my first song. And when I say I wrote, I suppose what I mean is that uh, my friend Brent Lawrence, who I started I Tilted Brent. Records with back in 1999, had a really cool studio space in Georgetown. And I would go down there and just hang out. And we'd talk biz um, hang out and one day we just started working on music and I was more or less just the words behind what was going to be laid out in the sequencer and um, Brent was the mastermind at that time on the desk and this is like pre-computer so he was yep. just sequencing and okay you know a classic sequencer and and his MPC um, 2000 I think was what he was using for sequencing and yeah, I mean, he pretty much did most of the mechanical work, the en engineering, if you will. And I, you know, twisted a couple faders and filters and, um, you know, played a couple keys on the keyboard. But that was back in 2000 is when I released like my first record. Right. Um, but, but it took me probably another, I don't know, 10 years to actually... Um, get myself set up to work on music by myself in my studio yeah. and then i had a couple couple aces that helped me along the process of learning basic reality of production and working within an a, you know a, a daw and that was gene lee yep. also josh quest yep. um and then shout out to gene yeah yeah and my buddy micaiah fender he, they were all super helpful in in um showing me the way and giving me the finer points. Gene, Gene Lee was actually the guy that said to me, um, well, let me preface this with saying that I had a lot of contacts and I had a lot of opportunities to do remixes or to release things on labels with people. But because I didn't know how to operate the, you know, the software um, and really make a song, uh, I, you know, I kind of went to my buddies and did collaborative stuff with right. them and sort of, um, use that as an opportunity to learn the process a little bit more. And Gene was the guy that said to me, I, I think probably because I was coming with many obligations that I had accepted right. for labels or for, for producers or whatever. And Gene's like, man, like, you know, I, pretty much, I, and I'm just assuming he thought this, but he probably, <laughs> he probably thought something like, man, I can't fit you into my schedule all the time. You know, to, I love working with you on right. music, but you need to get out and you need to learn how to do this yourself. So, right. you know, spend some time working on your craft. And uh, yeah, that was a serious, you know, kick in the butt moment. One where maybe I, I was insecure enough to evaluate um, whether I was 
cut out for things even. Right. But Gene, you know, Gene very kindly gave me sort of the the hardline reality check, and and that's what got me into my own studio at home and and working countless hours yeah. to to express myself through creating music. So, but it's kind of like that. You, you need those friends, right? That and it's like this two steps forward. But man, we got some momentum, and then he kind of stepped on it and. Yeah, one step back yeah. and look at yeah he does his own thing and now you do your own thing and you guys still do you guys ever collaborate now have you collaborated we, with gene in a we while? haven't worked on music for a while um but i you know gene's a guy that i can hang out and do anything mm -hmm. with anytime and and you know maybe in the future we will but i don't i don't know um but yeah we we did release a few things together uh a single and a remix and those were great I had a super fun time doing that but um yeah we haven't worked on anything since yeah so is I don't even know if you can answer this if this is a too tough of a math a math question for you but from a production standpoint like do you know how and we'll count remixes too like just generally how many have you released since you started producing um I, there's probably I, I probably did count like a couple years ago just for the sake of knowing myself I suppose but uh, I'd say probably around 150 things released i mean dude i have a section literally like a tilted section back there and that doesn't mm -hmm. include some like red-handed and some other stuff that mm -hmm. you've done too so mm -hmm. I, I definitely have a chunk of wax that yeah i picked up before i even knew you i just mm -hmm. knew your name yeah Pretty yeah funny yeah interesting and then there was a record store in there somewhere yeah i had two um the first record store i owned was in the university district I remember that, that was one. that was concepts okay and i had that from 1996 through 1999 um and then i sold it in 99 and then i you know i went a few years without having a record store um and then i opened another one in 2003 with rhino i remember rhino yeah and we kept that open for three years till 2006 um and then we closed that shop down. Gotcha. Yeah. What was that second one? Was that the... Down Low Music. Yeah. Was mm -hmm. that the Beats International space or different? No, uh, it was nearby. No, it was around the corner. It was, it was around the corner. Because yeah, was... I remember I used to go to Brian's shop and then your shop. Mm -hmm. I'd yeah. i do the run. Yeah. Platinum, Beats, and then your place too. Yeah. 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 That was a good time. We had a lot of fun record stores in Seattle. We really did. <sighs> so good. Yeah. I miss them. I mean, we still have Selector, which is cool. I haven't been to Seattle Records, which is in the U District. Mm -hmm. That sounds like Eva just took part of that, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah, I haven't been up there either. I did go to Selector um, last week yeah. and hung out with uh, Sherm Dog. He's coming through. Yeah. We're going to get him to well, come he's through. He's the best, man. Oh, man. He, I mean, uh, you know, not, not to go too deep off the path, Please. but Sher Sherman uh, was a very instrumental person in me learning how to mix records because he was... Um, well, I met him, I believe, at that first rave that I went to. No because he, he, yeah, his friends were actually friends with the guy that my my ex girlfriend <laughs> had gone to the party with, and I became friends with all of them. Right. Um. And Sherman, yeah, Sherman's been around since day one, and he, I remember Sherman trying to teach me the mathematics of mixing, um, house music or dance music at the time we played everything but right um i had no idea what he was talking about i'm like what's a kick i didn't even know the names of the drums no, you know i didn't either. know what a kick drum was a snare a hi-hat <laughs> you know like i had no no clue and he's like well you know the, the kick's always on the one and you know just trying to explain the mathematics and it was it was above and beyond me and totally so i i learned simply by learning how to 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 pitch and keep things um together time wise just by sounds i didn't right. uh, <laughs> you figured the phrasing out a little bit later yeah, yeah yeah i just i mean so many records then would even start with like ambient noise or yep. or whatever so i would just most of the time and most records either started like that or they started with a kick drum and generally they would you know they'd be timed the same and so I could start one with ambient noise and one with the kick drum and just make sure everything sounded like it was, you know, like at the same time, the pitch was yep. right for both records. And, you know, somehow I learned how to, how to mix doing that. I, you know, so I got to ask you a couple questions about this because I'm always curious. So were you always a music lover just from like day one? Was music a thing? Like I always ask guys if they love it, girls too, but. I mean, yeah, I always, I, I, yeah, I was always really into music. I, my, 
my dad was an artist, but with other mediums, um, and he didn't really play music in the house, but at a young age, he bought me like a, you know, classic stereo setup yep. with the turntable and the eight track player yep. and, and, and a couple of speakers and, nice. um, was, was really cool about, you know, um, giving me chore money for, to be able to go to the store and buy some records or whatever. And yeah, I really, um, I really dug just sitting by myself listening to music. Um, and then at an older age, I always felt the urge to try to get people to listen to the music that I like. Got it. You know, we went, we went through our high school area. When I say R, I, I'm, I'm talking to you yeah, most yeah. specifically, but we went through that high school era of, you know, wanting to have a car with the system and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like I would just trap my poor friends in my car. Yeah, um, and make them listen to what I wanted to listen to, or I would drive so that I could play the music. You know, because we're similar age. What were you? What were you listening to then? What was it? Oh, during high school. Yeah. I mean, a lot of R and B, hip hop, and yep. like a little bit new of gangster wave. rap was yeah. coming. Oh right? yeah, gangster rap was coming in, but our, uh, a lot of R and B, um, and a lot of like Depeche Mode, Cure, yep. Smiths, Information like, Society. Yeah, yeah, yep. just kind of like that. That really cool digital music you know like i i oh i mean i guess a lot of it was i don't know i it's it was the first like electronic music i guess totally. i should say digital is the wrong word but electronic music that i first got into was definitely like depeche mode and you know same story man mm -hmm. i mean yaz was another one mm -hmm. yaz was huge yeah yeah even yeah. though like, upstairs at eric's yeah, it's so good <laughs> so good I, there's still like five songs on that that mm -hmm. album that give me goosebumps every fucking yeah, time i listen yeah. to it so no that's cool well the reason i the follow-up question to that um so when i first started learning to dj and kind of break the sounds apart to match beats you know mm -hmm. i haven't ever really done much production besides like hey that would sound cool you know more of the executive producer type stuff but when i started to dj i found that i lost as a music lover i used to see a music a piece of music as sort of this holistic thing and then it almost took a little magic away when i when i had a guy just like your sherman i had a guy named mark break it down for me it's like here's the one here's the counts here's in and, and it kind of, it became like formulaic. And for like, there was a time where it kind of took some of the, some of the life out of music for me. And then it's almost like I came out the other side and loved it even more. But mm -hmm. it, it was this journey of relearning how to listen to music. And I don't know if that, did you experience that or, or it never hit you like that? Um, it never hit me like where I realized it, but listening to you say it, I realized that something happened where primarily I would, I would listen to music it, it just happened audibly. It didn't happen. Yeah. It didn't happen with a visualization really, but certainly, uh, yeah, I, I think that I used to just be like every little noise, like I'd be like, Oh, listen to that. Like I, yeah. I could locate, um, all the different elements of a song sort of in a, uh, sound soundstage in my mind. Yep. And then with production, I definitely, when you're looking at it, um, you know, a sequencer or you're looking at you know a mathematical graph essentially on your screen and all the components of the song that you're writing are there you know like i definitely have to turn the screen off once in a while yeah because otherwise i i, I the anticipation of seeing everything takes away from um what that i'm hearing staging like that yeah totally. yeah so I, you know i have and i have to i have to turn off the screen and sort of maybe even turn away from you know, the actual production area and sort of just disconnect and, and put my ears there instead of everything else, you know? You, you just reminded me. So I'm, I worked at Groove Tech for a while and I worked with Wes, mm -hmm. Wesley Holmes. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember one day like sort of half-assedly saying, oh, Wes, I want to produce a track. It seems like everybody who's DJing is producing a track. Who would you go to? He goes, he goes I'd go to John Lee. And I go, really? What's that like? He goes, well, he's going to make you work. Like, be ready to sweat. And I was like... That sounds terrible. Like, I'm gonna... <laughs> so anyway, it never it never happened, but like it kind of intimidated me because that was a thing. He looked at me like dead in the eyes and goes, "He's gonna make you work, bro." Uh, <laughs> thank so, you, Wes. That's, uh, <laughs> it was super funny. We probably just keep try to keep you away from me. <laughs> <laughs> probably. probably. <laughs> anyway, um, well, I mean, okay. So we talked a lot about the production thing. We talked about how you got into it. What, like. To me, and maybe I'm just paying more attention, but to me, it seems like you're busier now than ever, both with releases and then also DJ gigs. 
Am, am I right about that? Am I wrong about that? Is there some kind of resurgence happening just generally in the scene? I'm trying to understand. I mean, to gr- give credit where credit's due to the scene, I mean, it's just gotten bigger, more global. Um, you know, in social media, as as little as I like it for anything other than a promotional tool and maybe to see a little bit about what people are up to or what's yeah. going on in the world, um, it's, it's definitely brought a new level of visibility, which is much easier for people far away from you to to be able to you know understand who you are or what you're doing but yeah certainly i mean definitely busier in the studio than ever more releases coming out than ever and that's just uh you know as a producer or you know dj or as a human being you know we all go through a lot of ups and downs and there's just times when i'm more inspired and happier and more fulfilled in life and usually um that instills a a work harder, um, a bit more passionate, you know, the, just all those things that I, I kind of want out of myself come into play. And then, you know, you just, I've just been busy cause I've just really been having fun and enjoying it. Um, and then that, I think that translates into my personal relationships with people. Um, and of course, Ocaso and a couple great friends that, um, my, my, my really good friend, Alejandro, mm-hmm. um, Martinez goes by Andromo. He he he's introduced me to a lot of people in Central America, and I've okay. gotten I've gotten a lot of gigs through that introduction. So uh, just just in that way, you know, I've I've just uh, m- met a lot of people, done a lot of networking, and um, really grateful to to have a fairly busy DJ schedule and and to be traveling more in, for all that. Um, but you know, it's I think it's just a lot of loving what I do and having done it for a long time and, and not like raining on the parade very often, you know, like I, I stay, I stay pretty on pretty good terms with just about everybody that I meet and and do work with. And so that's, I think that's a a very important thing is just to, you know, to be personable and to, you know, work well with others as well. And I think that those are the things that, you know short story long <laughs> yes i'm more busy but you know it's not not yeah. just not just because of myself it's because there's lovely people i've met along the way that that help with connections and but that doesn't that happen unless you're putting yourself out there and it's interesting because i think whether it's creative i see it in the corporate world too but but especially in creative endeavors there's a lot of even with really talented artists sometimes there's there's kind of this fam- famine mentality in this this unhealthy competitiveness that happens. And I don't get the sense that you, and there's a few others that I know locally here, you guys just don't even play in that, in that, in that ballpark. Right. You guys have this sort of like abundant. It's not. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I look at it as old as that, like I'm only competing with myself, yeah. you know? And yeah, of course there's, there's, there's those around me that I'm really close with and I have deep connections with. And, um, at any length, I'll try to support them, and I know that they do the same for me. But there's also a, a collateral group of people around too, whom I, I mean, I try to be helpful in general to people. But you know, I, I, there's there's a certain thing to be said about those you're really close with versus those sure. that that you just know. And I'm I'm sure that I don't know where I'm going with with this thought anymore. But I started it. Keep yeah, going, yeah. Keep going. <laughs> no, I'm just. I guess I'm just saying that. You know, I I try not to get super close to too many too many yeah. people and too involved with like things or people i just like to kind of do yeah. my own thing and i'm just competing with myself and i'm just trying to have a um a happier well not happier but just just a, a happy um abundant life sure. and i you know i'm willing to work hard for that and i'm super grateful for it and that's uh i think that's you know I don't know. <laughs> no, man. I think I think it comes. No, I get it. I think it comes through not only with your productions because I, I do really like. There's a lot of shitty music out there. There's a few Seattle producers that are really dropping some some heat right now. Mm-hmm. I'd say mm-hmm. you. I'd say Tony H. I mean, yeah. uh, Terry Jacinto, who I still consider local. I was bugging him about yeah. that, even though he's in yeah. San Diego. Yeah. Like, just for me personally, right? There's other there's others out there, but for me personally, the sound that you guys just hit me right with the stuff that you guys produce and remix. And, and, you know, it's the right, again, it's a very subjective thing for everybody's individual taste, but it shows like that work ethic and that sort of Switzerland way that you guys 
kind of go about business. You're not too clicked up, but you're on good terms with everybody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like we were saying, you're going to be playing flammable here in April on a vinyl night. So. Easter Sunday. Oh, I'll be there. I'll be there. It's going to be good. <laughs> it's going to be exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. So I, I guess with that, you know, today, I mean, is there anything else going on in the present that you want to, that you want to shout out to, or that's, that's happening right now? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, you mentioned Tony, uh, you know, Tony and I have, uh, we've got lots of music out not nothing yep. upcoming but you know i just want to give a shout out to tony yeah. cuz he's been he's been a great guy to work with he's killing and, it right like yeah yeah he's doing great yeah, yeah. and we're we uh, you know we're definitely brothers from another you know yep. um but yeah i i have um i have some music that i'm releasing with uh, my buddy Corey. It goes by pattern drama that mm. we're doing an ep out on music is for lovers in may which is a a, a great label um i i just finished some stuff in the studios last weekend with andromo um and you know he does with, percussion too right is it um, is, or am i wrong about that am yeah, i confusing you, him yeah you were i mean he makes very percussive okay. music but yeah oh, okay yeah, I, I wouldn't I, i'm thinking of somebody yeah else, he's then. he's a dj producer Got based it. out of vancouver sorry andromo that, i have it, some of your shit <laughs> <laughs> uh he's from el salvador originally Got um it. Uh, I've got some music coming out on Household Digital soon. I have some music coming out um, on Prilison recordings. Um, I've got a remix for really a, a house legend, DJ Linus, that'll be coming out soon. Nice, man. And I am I just finished a remix for Uniting Souls music for um, this guy, Cole Lawton, yep. who's a pretty hot selling um awesome house producer um uh, you know i just had my ep come out for uniting souls too that's been Super doing really well solid, the yeah. messenger ep yep yep um i got you know the gig at flammable easter sunday i'm taking off for costa rica again this friday and i'll be playing at el garito and tamarindo on saturday and then i'm playing at play lagarto uh with tiga um and my boys alex and mauricio nice. in in costa rica as well you so, did, yeah. do are you also doing desert hearts did i see that no that was an, i i shared oh um, that was an old I, yeah an i shared old, something okay. old yeah i went i went and played with with cory baker pattern drama like a, a few years back and just was kind of wowed by the memory again that so. always seems like a fun a fun oh, event it's, too, it's, man. yeah it's it's i mean i've only been once but it was life-changing for me because yeah i got to play and it was get him uh, back in there yeah you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah yeah that looks cool okay so I don't want to step on it if you're going to say something else. No, no. Uh, the 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 sort of the last thing, maybe the most challenging, or maybe the easiest, but you know, just in general, like I always like to talk kind of about past, present, and future. Like future for John Lee, do you, do you have it mapped out? Like, wh where do you want? Are you where you want to be? Are the things you want to do? Are there like these big bold goals that you haven't achieved yet? Um, big bold goals. No, I just want to keep having fun with it and. Uh, sort of being a receiver for whatever the universe wants to you know send me um i i definitely would like to explore central and south america a bit more as, as yeah. a, well as a person um you know just such i'm just so amazed by that part of the world and and i, I definitely would like to gig more and i i see that in my future you know um so yeah i mean hopefully uh Hopefully I get to go some more places, do some more fun things. But, you know, if if things were wrapped today, I, I'm sure I'd grieve the loss of that part of my life. But I can say that I honestly feel very fulfilled and nice. grateful for everything. Um, but I did want to give one more shout out. Oh, yeah, and please. I can't believe I forgot him. No, don't forget. Simon Hauser is one of my best, best buddies in the world. And I want to shout him out, too, because yeah. I actually just bought I bought a track and then I realized it was one of his tracks. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. So Simon's great. We but we we have a side project um, that we call Lee Hauser. Seen it, yeah. Uh, yeah. And we have uh, we have a remix coming up soon on a label called Elephant Chords um, out of uh, Argentina. Nice. Yeah, and then one more shout out. I got a, I got a single coming out on Seattle's Feral One Records, which is a new um, newer label that's cool. uh, coming up, putting some really good music out. But just you know, just a shout out to to some of the Absolutely. other locals I didn't mention earlier. But no, I mean it just seems like the whole local scene, and I think I actually messaged you on one of your posts on some social stream somewhere. It just seems like there's a lot of heat coming out of Seattle area right yeah, now. Man. There's some really really inspiring. Talented producers, promo producers, promoters, talented yeah. promoters, producers, DJs. DJs yeah. Like it's just, 
it, it's it's a little bit lit up. That's why I want to was asking you if the if the scene is like if it's opening back up, if it's changing, is it just post COVID? Everybody's getting back in their groove. There just seems to be something clicking right now. Yeah, I mean, I definitely you know things opening back up has probably been a big factor, but there's also just I mean, Seattle's always been a super international city as yeah. far as the the different ethnic um, groups of people that we've had here, but I think with the explosion of technology in the city it's really just brought a bunch of more uh yeah. more international people and and i've noticed a lot more like students as well from other places when i'll go to the clubs and stuff i'll meet i'll meet people that are in college that are you yeah. know from central south america i meet a lot of people from so many different places these days when i go out so there's definitely been an influx of more more of the international community into Seattle. And I think that's brought a lot of um, well, well needed diversity to the yep. scene as well, because people are coming from different parts of the world and maybe they're DJs. So their sounds are influenced by something else or they're promoters. So they, they've, they grew up with different artists. And I think that's been a really good thing for the scene. It's definitely made things a little more diverse and created probably a few more groups of people, which, you know, can only serve the city better. I, I totally agree. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Well, Nice, man. Well, I, this is actually my favorite part where we quit talking and I uh, I send you to the studio and drop a little bit of a mix. Yeah. Um, and, you know, your call if you want to say anything about it, but anything you want to play, talk about that you're going to play, was there any kind of theme or are you just going to go for it? You know, I just let my mixing speak for itself. It. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> I learned to stop talking about myself as a DJ. <laughs> I mean, I sh I'm sure my, my ego will creep in every once in a while and, yeah. and and you know express that i thought i played really well or something but yeah. for the most part you know i just like to play music and <laughs> I get you. i'm the same way man yeah i'm the same way but uh okay well let's do it so if you're ready man let's uh let's stop this and let's let you get a get behind the decks and go after it sounds good thanks john thanks for coming through yeah thanks you thanks right. for having me yeah